When I first built this TFT name badge, I was a little disappointed that I was not able to display video. There are a few reasons for that, uh, the biggest of which is the lack of memory on the RP2040 to hold a frame buffer. The RP2350 has twice as much RAM, so can I put this right? Let me show you. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, Robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. The original version of this badge and the TFT screen I'm using, which is a cheap MSP2401, I've talked about before. The project reads PNG files from the SD card and displays them on the TFT screen. I've used it as a badge uh, as a number of events now, and it always goes down well. The badge can't do video display though. Firstly, it can't pull data fast enough through the SD card via the SPI interface, and then it has to update the screen at a line at a time due to the lack of RAM on the Pico not allowing for a frame buffer. With the RP2350 and a Pico 2, I thought I might be able to solve some of these problems. The SD card speed needs a more fundamental fix of a parallel interface to the SD card, which I'm not handling today. There's also the problem that the libraries I've used for the SD card are not compatible with the RP2350, as they use the RP2040's hardware real-time clock. One of the few things deleted on upgrade to the RP2350. So I'm going to store the images on internal flash and use the larger memory of the RP2350 to form a frame buffer. I'll also use a Pi Moroni's Pico 2 Plus and that give me 60 meg of flash. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video or the other payment options in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So this video is about how we get video onto this little display here, this MSP2401 via an RP2350. Um, I've looked at these displays before, so please do go back and look at that video. But by and large, they're 320 by 240 pixel displays. They use 16-bit uh, color, um, or generally, you can use 18-bit, but I'm using 16-bit. It uses an ILI9341 driver, though that's all encoded in a library that I'm just using. Um, it does have an SD card reader, but we're not going to use that, and we're going to use it via 3.3 volts. To drive it, I'm going to use a RP2350 board, and I'm going to use Pi Moroni's uh, Pico 2 uh, Plus board. And the reason I'm going to do that rather than using a Pico 2 is the amount of flash on board. A Pico 2 has 4 meg of flash, and the Pico 2 Plus has 16 mega flash and it's that additional flash space that I'm going to use because that's where we're going to store the image. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Wolf SSL. If you're serious about cybersecurity, then you need to know about Wolf SSL. Wolf SSL is a leading provider of security solutions, offering a lightweight, portable and embedded TLS and other security libraries. Whether you're developing for IoT, mobile or desktop, Wolf SSL has got at your back with the highest standards in encryption and secure communications. Why do I trust Wolf SSL? Well, their libraries is optimized for resource constrained environments, making it perfect for these sorts of embedded projects that I'm working on. Plus, the libraries are open source and constantly being updated to ensure top notch security in an ever changing landscape of cyber threats. So whether you're a developer, a technical enthusiast, or someone who just wants to keep their data safe, check out Wolf SSL. You can find more information in the link below. Trust me, your data will thank you. Now let's get back to the video. I'm gonna use the same PCB I used for the original badge. And um, I'm just really replacing the Pico on there with this Pico 2 Plus. And that's all I need to do. Now, if you're coming at this fresh and you just want to know how I'm connecting up this screen, well, it's an SPI device and it's connected up um, onto the 
uh, pins as shown in this diagram. The SD card is actually a separate SPI device on, on here as well. Um, I'm just not using that for this demo today. So we need to somehow get this animated image um, onto the Pico. And how are we going to do that? In fact, how are we going to produce it at all? Because PNGs are really just single images. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm basically going to say that uh, our PNG image is basically going to be a vertical stacked set of all of the frames in one image. Each frame will be 240 lines in length. And that's quite a common way of doing it. And then we're going to be very careful around what the size of this image is, um, because that size is going to govern um, how much we can actually store on the Pico, but also how we store that, so, um, that image is also going to govern the speed at which we can process it and provide the frames per second. So of course, in terms of size, we can play with things like, well, we can play with a number of pixels, but actually I want full screen. So I want 320 by 240 pixels. I can play with the number of colors and I can reduce the color space down. So I can go from being, um, you know, uh, 32 bit color or 16 bit color down to 8 bit color, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I can also play with the compression algorithm and the level of compression that I'm using, and that can get my image size down as well. And that's really good because a small image is great for us that we can store more video. But compression is actually also a problem because the higher the compression factor, the more work that our poor old Pico 2 or RP2350 is going to have to do. And therefore the slower its frame rate is going to be for actually displaying that. So there is a bit of balance and playing around with these things that one has to do in order to actually get this to maximize. And I certainly um, had frame rates between about seven frames per second up to about 18 frames per second. And the difference is all how I've actually compressed the, uh, the size of that PNG image and all of the utilities I can do to do that. So that's the challenge we've got here and what we're gonna work through. And let me show you the tools I've used this time. There might be other tools. Let me know if you've got better tools for doing this. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to crop um, our original image down and scale it so that we have uh, a video that is of the right format and then we can convert it to lots of PNG images all of which should be 8 bits. We're going to then merge those and stack them vertically and then we're going to work on compressing that file before we actually download it is into a C data structure so that I can actually easily compile it onto the uh, as part of my program. So for the video editing player, I'm actually going to use uh, DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve is a utility that I use all of the time. All of these videos are produced in DaVinci Resolve. It is my video editing, compositing and uh, rendering software. And I can use it to produce the right well, the right orientations, I guess, for this video, but not quite the right screen size, because I can't actually go down to 320 by 240 pixels. Uh, DaVinci Resolve doesn't support that. So the closest I can get is twice that, 640 by 480. But I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve still to get to that, and I'm going to set its frame rate to be 15 frames per second. And then I'm going to tell it that I want to, its output not to be an MP4, uh, which is what I would normally produce, but actually to be a whole set of PNG files, one file for every frame. Then I'm going to use this utility called Image Magic, and that's a command line utility that I find really, really great for doing mass resizing, uh, changing formats, etc., of all of these things. And it has this wonderful ability called minus append, which allows us to vertically stack those images. So I can happily resize them down to 320 by 240. I can append them together to actually build up the image and uh, then uh, store it in movie.png. Now, 
The slight problem is that is it seems to be slightly more bloated than I wanted it to be. And I've played around with the image magic options, uh, including PNG 8, which should be able to drop it to an 8-bit color space. But this causes quite a lot of artifacts in the image that are just ugly. So um, I've ended up using a, another piece of software called PNG Mini, which is certainly available for Mac. I'm not sure it's available for anything else, but um, that did the best uh, optimization of this image I've seen. Um, so that's what I've used in this demo. Uh, the other option is to use uh, PNG Quant, which also does pretty good job. Um, and I quite like that as well. Um, didn't there was about a K difference in size file size between the two with what looked equivalent quality. And finally, we're going to use bin to C, which if you haven't used it, this is just a utility that takes a binary uh, file and actually creates it into a data structure that you can use in C. And it stores it then in a header file for you. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. All of the source code I'm going to talk about today is on GitHub um, on this address. So let's just have a look at the repo and how all of this works. Now, I will apologize. There are a few things in the repo that probably shouldn't be there because um, I've been experimenting. So I was trying to get the SD card to work as well. So there is actually the libraries for SD card reading and the FAT file system for SD cards there. I'm not actually using them right now because uh, they don't actually work properly with the RP2350. But what we have there, of course, is our lib SPNG and uh, mini Z, which are the libraries we actually need to work uh, with these PNG files. So all of the code really is actually in main. Um, its main is a, a free RTOS application, so we are using free RTOS, though technically I probably don't need to use free RTOS for this. So firstly, we've got an include file in main for movie.png.h. That's actually the movie file that we are going to display. Um, and we're going to read it as if it is a, um, a, a file. So SPNG is going to read it in a streaming mode. So I do need to write this function SPNG read and get, have some sort of structure so I'm maintaining where I am in, in this memory structure as I read through it. And that's what this structure is here and this function in it is here. Really it's just read from memory. Um, generally SPNG read needs some error handling to uh, pass back uh, error conditions. But actually if we're reading from memory, we can't really have any error conditions. So I can just put a pass back read, um, zero all the time because it will constantly succeed. So um, I have a legacy utility I'm not going to talk about in here just to actually display a single PNG image of up to 320 by 240 pixels. Um, that's not the one I want to talk about. The one I want to talk about is about displaying an animated PNG file. And what we're going to do is give to it, it the display to, to put the animation on, uh, the pointer to where that uh, video is in, in RAM, how long it is in RAM, and the target frequency uh, per or frames per second we want. Uh, and it will return back after displaying the whole um, video um, file in one go, uh, what the achieved frames per second was. So we can see how well it's doing. So really what this is doing is firstly setting up the uh, SPNG library and making sure that we are all ready to do that. Uh, then we can set it up for streaming mode and we can then go through and uh, check what the size of that image is and that it's valid and that we'll be able to use it. And we can then start the decoding process and we go through decoding it a line at a time. So what I'm then going to do is every time I read a line, I'm going to take a little bit of time to convert that line and put it into a data structure of the right format to be able to display it directly on the screen. So. Um, these displays are using uh, 16 bits in a 565 model. They're basically using 16 bits to display a single uh, uh, pixel. 
and I can convert what is actually for me uh, three um, uh, three bytes of RGB information into that single 16-bit value and store it in in my frame buffer. And then when I get up to the final line of my frame, I can actually place that on the screen. There is a strange behavior I found with this display that if I try to push out the whole 240 lines of data in one go, it actually corrupted the final 40 lines. So I've actually had to send out and print everything onto the display twice. So I do the first 200 lines and then the final 40. And that works fine. And then there's a bit of calculation here where we work out how much time's gone by and therefore what uh, frame rate we're actually achieving. And that's all we're doing really. Multiple images give us, uh, with some slight delays in between, gives us a moving image and, and a video. Main uh, on this is just really setting up the display and telling you actually how that's connected up uh, to SDI. Uh, it will display a test image first and then it will go into uh, running this movie forever. And it keeps on telling me how much the frame rate that it's achieved is. So it's slightly scary being able to see myself talk like this um, on a little screen, but actually this works really quite well. And actually that's not bad, running at 15 frames per second, giving you quite a convincing video display. I'm quite pleased to have video or animated PNGs playing so well. So I'm thinking of making this look a, like a Harry Potter universe photo name badge, where the photo actually moves. I've got some video editing and compositing work to do to make that happen. The code for the RP2350, well, that's nailed. If you like this video and helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the other payment uh, methods in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And of course, I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.